this light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this light of mine I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine hide it under a bushel no I'm gonna let it shine hide it under a bushel no I'm gonna let it shine hide it under a bushel no I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good morning, friends. I just wanted to take you on a quick tour of the garden. There's so much changing. I'm gonna do a full garden tour uh, at the start of summer, but things are transitioning. Like, summer st or spring stuff is coming out and summer stuff is going in and there's so much changing. And I just wanted to give you a quick look before it all changes completely. So I, I wanna show you a few things that are bolting a few things that are getting ready to come out, some things that have already gone in as part of our succession planting has started, and just see how things are going. So come on, let's take a look. Bolting is when the plant changes its gears and decides it's gonna go to seed. And that it happens because of a change in the weather a change in the temperature, a change in the sunlight, and it signals to the plant that something's gonna happen that will end its life soon and it's got to procreate. Its purpose is to spread its seed. And so whenever a spring plant that likes the cool weather feels like it's gonna die because of the temperature change, it's going to go to seed. And what that does is it, it changes the leaves. And let me show you an example of that. So this is our better, our butter crunch lettuce plant. Um, I've taken off the bottom leaves because they tend to rot and they'll rot the stem and kill the plant. But you can see that these do not look like lettuce leaves anymore. They're shorter, they're more wrinkled up. Um, if you ate one of these, it would not taste delicious like a lettuce, but it's going to seed. It's changing its gears. So it's, instead of putting its energy into luscious leaves, it's putting its energy into creating seeds. And so what that does is um, it changes the flavor and it's a defense mechanism so that plants won't eat it or animals won't eat it. Um, but um, it also, it also changes the way that it um, uses its energy. Here is the red lettuce that was started bolting in my last update, and it is starting to go to flower. Then we should have some seeds off of this plant. This is a lettuce plant that's bolting. I just left the one. I had three in here, but I have put in some tomatillos now. These are purple tomatillos. You can see that kale here is coming into the space here and it will come out soon. Um, we're going to be harvesting our red kale and freezing it. We're going to leave the blue kale as long as it will stay. I'll bring you around here to the beans. Now beans, I planted uh, about 30 beans in this row and there were too many beans. and. Um, they were crowding so you want your beans to be about six inches apart maybe a little closer but um, you want to be able to see the bottoms and that's important for air because if they don't get enough air they start to get really unhealthy they start to get blight and mildew and 
um, and they that will not do. You can see the beans aren't are currently climbing the trellis here. We've got quite a lot of growth here on the beans. I'm very looking very much forward to getting some greasy grits beans off of those. And I'm going to pan around here and look at the asparagus beans. These are asparagus beans. I got a little yellowing here on the leaf, but they may need a little fertilizer. Uh, that's just signs that there might not be enough of something they need in the soil. Now these are yellow because they were shaded by this uh, beautiful kale plant. I just cannot get enough of this kale. It is so beautiful and tasty. So that's why these are stunted a little bit on this side. But they will come around when that kale comes out. Um, and they are climbing too. They're not as fast as the greasy grits. But they're called an asparagus long bean. And they'll be like a noodle bean, a really long three foot long bean. And in this part here, I've got the garlic. Um, you can see that it's getting a little more yellow at the tips. This is a determinant tomato. It's called a better bush tomato. I've got several of them in the garden, just in various places. I try to plant a little diversely in my beds because that will help deter pests. It will confuse them. So putting a random tomato plant in here may hide the smell of it around those garlic uh, when the garlic comes out. I'll put something different in here to kind of hide the smell. Um, right now our red cabbage is doing so wonderfully. They're all heading up nicely and there's very, very little pest damage. These beans are the beans that I took out. Like I said, I sowed 30 Row, uh, 30 plants and I had to take about half of them out. I did transplant them over here and they're not looking great but anything that comes up over here is a bonus. Uh, one thing I did sneak in over here as I pulled out the bok choy and had space was my zucchini plants. Two of them came up. Um, they might be a little too close together but I might and I might be planting more zucchini a little bit later. Zucchini is one of those things that's a 50-day variety and you have a lot of room, a wiggle room in how late you can plant that. So I can plant it again when this cabbage comes out or when the kale comes out. I can plant it in other places. So that's just the first plant. Um, these down here are okra. And yes, I do have some beautiful mushrooms growing in the garden. And these mushrooms just... Um, indicate that the soil is healthy so um, that, those make me very happy here's another shot of my cabbage they are all heading up and cabbage keeps a really long time very excited about the cabbage but that is a spring veggie that will be coming out and it is still still getting big it won't be long but it'll probably the end of june it'll be coming out Okay, on this side of the trellis here is the cucumber. And these are their Japanese long cucumbers, like the English cucumbers that you see. Um, and they're doing really well. This side is doing better. They're bigger um, than this side, again, because of the kale. The kale is shading them and um, kind of stunting them, I guess. <laughs> on this side, is the Boston pickling cucumber and I got these from Baker Creek and these two on the end are the Japanese long cucumbers now these two plants were started as seed in the polytunnel and uh, I planted eight seeds they all eight came up and six of them died when I tried potting them up and so I transplanted these out here they should be much bigger and you can see the difference between those and the ones that I direct sowed several weeks later so the point here is that these cucumbers like to be direct sowed they're, they do better when they're direct sown even weeks later if, even if you have to wait several weeks later um, they're going to do better than if you try to transplant them uh, from starting them from seed indoors. One thing you may have noticed is that on the blocks here, 
my grasses are gone. Well, some of them remain, but most of the grass has been removed. And I've been working really, really hard to remove the grass. And um, I removed these blocks and put cardboard just under the block and out from the block just a bit. And what that does is it, it reduces the grass, but it also helps give me a lot of control about what's in the bed. So I can kind of spot treat what's in the bed um, and nothing is in, encroaching in from the outside. Here's another little better bush tomato just kind of sprinkled throughout the garden. We're hiding the tomatoes because they are susceptible to tomato hornworm and they are ferocious. Those hornworms are bad. Okay, these are ground cherries. I've got a little row of ground cherries. I've got quite a few more in the polytunnel um, and they were planted at the same time, but the ones in the ground always get much bigger so fast. Here's another glimpse of the blue scotch kale. How beautiful that stuff is. Oh my. It's more green than the broccoli. It tastes like broccoli and cabbage at the same time. Um, we've harvested a lot of our broccoli, but these broccoli plants will continue to produce heads. So don't kill your broccoli plants and you can eat these leaves. Uh, the small ones are really good in salad. Some people uh, do wraps with the big ones, like a cabbage roll. Now these are broccoli heads that have shot up. They have started to separate and they are delicious. Um, I don't like to eat below this uh, joint here, but these are so tender and delicious and you can probably fry them up. They would be so good that way. Um, so just because they're going to seed doesn't, it actually makes them sweeter and more tender. Um, so here's some more broccoli heads broccoli heads that are coming and I've been eating on this one there's a lot of the the ones that are this is really bolting but that's what broccoli does uh, when it produces broccoli it's actually bolting so uh, that's what we eat the flour here is that beautiful carrot flower it is in full bloom it looks like a puff of a cloud or something it's beautiful um, here are the other carrot flowers, and the reason I let this go to seed instead of harvesting the one single carrot is because I only had the one carrot. I didn't have any more carrot seeds, and so I was hoping it would produce some seeds for me, and it is, uh, but man, that carrot flower is gorgeous. The tomato plants these are summer vegetables, obviously, uh, actually fruit. And I've cleaned off all of the lower leaves, um, pruned them so that there's lots of airflow. We, we don't want any congestion when it comes to tomatoes. They're very prone to blight. These are my black crim tomatoes, these three. This is a random potato plant that popped up. I'd let it grow. There's a little carrot growing. Um, and this is another black crim. Here I have a yellow pear tomato plant that um, I let split one time. So it's one plant, two main vines. This is my little sweetie. Um, her seed was five years old when she, when she was planted and she's doing great. Again, I did clean off all the bottom leaves. So in this bed, I have a lot of brassicas. Um, one of those is a kohlrabi. Now, in the last video, I thought that I was looking at a um, broccoli plant, but actually this is a kohlrabi plant. And it's German for cabbage turnip. So these leaves are like cabbage, and that bulb is like a turnip. So it's like cabbage turnip. Um, I believe that all of these, are, yes, that's a kohlrabi, that's a baby kohlrabi. You can see the bulb starting to form here, and then the leaves. They look a lot like broccoli leaves, which this may be broccoli, this one. Uh, and I've got to be on the lookout for some eggs. Oh, there's another cabbage worm. Yeah. Pick him off. 
we want to make sure and get any eggs that are on here off the cabbage worms will absolutely decimate the plant yeah we got eggs and they're easy to get rid of you've just got to wipe them off um, but if you don't catch the cabbage worm and treat it early it's going to take over your plants so I'm being very careful about that um, here is an example of a bolting bok choy right here and what I do when it's starting to bolt is I just twist and the reason that I do that is to leave as much root in the ground as possible so there we go and that will go in my compost like I said once it starts bolting all the leaves change they start to get longer and sharper and they change in their flavor so once you once you have a bolting plant you want to go ahead and get rid of that chard is looking so beautiful oh man this is looking so great i love the chard and it seems to not be wanting to bolt yet this is called a ford hook chard that's the variety i'm growing so my my peas my sugar snap peas um have been really producing a lot and some of some of the st stalks have been damaged by storm but even if the stalk is bent over um, it will continue to produce peas but what I've got here is an example of succession planting so I started my tomatoes that I want to use on this trellis down below and they're very small at the moment but once the peas come out and it won't be long in the next few weeks the peas will be coming out these tomatoes will already be well established and ready to take over this trellis so let me bring you in for a little bit closer look on that these tomatoes are called a black cherry tomato and they're very small um, but as they get bigger it'll take them a, a little bit a few weeks to get bigger and then they'll be ready to take over this trellis when the peas come out. Um, right here in the corner here, I have a zinnia plant and it's getting ready to flower. These zinnias are really good for the garden. They help deter pests. And it's gonna be in this corner, it'll probably be flowing over the bed on this side and just, you know, taking its space there. This is another better bush. It's actually the first big one that I got this season and it is setting some flowers there, you can see. Uh, so it won't be long before this will have fruit on it. These are some more purple tomatillos. These are the first ones that I planted out, not long before the others, but it is these two plants. There's one here and it snakes around the other one. And then there's a second plant there. So there's actually two plants here, but this one is snaking. And I actually put a pin, I actually put a pin in it to keep it kind of away from this eggplant. So this eggplant has a chance. So I move, I try to move it, try to kind of train it to go that direction where there's space for it. And I, I had another eggplant planted beside this one but it was crowding this one was crowding it out so i moved it over here so it'll have a better chance and it'll grow up here and this this kale will come out this weekend so there'll be plenty of room for the tomatillos to grow um again succession planting this is a san marizano tomato that i have stuck in here between the lettuces i know the lettuces are coming out uh so that one We'll have plenty of room to grow, and this one is a yellow pear. They'll have plenty of room to grow when the lettuces and cabbages come out. Also, um, I have some peppers in the ground. These are chili cayenne. Uh, my leeks are doing great. They're getting really big. They'll be ready to come out here soon. And these other three are 
jalapenos. So I've got a jalapeno. There's a little jalapeno there in a different variety. And this one's a jalapeno. These are my other tomato starts that I haven't been able to plant out in the garden. I just haven't had a spot for them. Um, these better bush can go anywhere. They're real small. But the others are yellow pears, black crims in the blue cups. Um, this is a local tomato. This pink one is that someone gave me seeds for. I don't know the variety. These are also yellow pear and they're starting to, to blight just a little bit. So I set them out here in the uh, air so they can get plenty of air. This is a, um, this here is a sucker that came off of the yellow pear. Um, and some of these I'll probably give away. Um, this is our celery. And I just noticed that we are experiencing bolting in the celery right here. You can see the seeds have started. Right there at the top. So we've got a couple of their bolting. The celery will be coming out soon. So all of my spring things are bolting. <laughs> Okay, let's go into the polytunnel for just a minute and I'll show you what kinds of things I have ready to go in when all of those spring things come out. Okay, in this tray I have a lot of different peppers. Well, actually there's just two varieties. There's the red, the red jalapeno and the chili cayenne. It may not look like a lot of plants, but when they get big on their full size, uh, it'll be plenty of plants. Here I have a lot of ground cherries that are ready to go, and you can see some of them have set some fruit. The ground cherries uh, set fruit in this little husk, and the husk turns uh, papery brown when they're ready. They'll actually drop off the plant when they're fully ripe. Here are some more yellow pear. Um, these are suckers that I started in these pots, these three. Uh, I should get those out with the other tomatoes. And this is another black cherry. These are looking really healthy, so that's why I haven't moved them, but I probably will go ahead and get them out. And these are my eggplants, and even in the polytunnel, they're suffering from pest damage. Um, they're pretty healthy still, and I need to get them out pretty soon. So I'll be planting them, probably as the kale comes out, I'll be planting them in between my blue scotch kale. Um, this is a radish that's going to seed. And the radish pods, you can see the radish down here. The radish pods taste like the radish. Um, and here is a nasturtium. These are very good for the garden. They attract aphids, so you can treat them uh, in a concentrated way. Okay, so our strawberry beds are flourishing right now. There's plenty of strawberry plants in there and we were told to pick off the blossoms but we just could not bring ourselves to call us rookies uh, but we couldn't pull the blossoms so they are producing strawberries but they're also producing runners and i'll show you a close-up here in just a moment we have plenty of strawberries that are growing right now we we pick off 15 to 30 every day which is not many but for the first year that's quite a lot when we weren't expecting to get any um, so we are picking off quite a few. Um, the, this side is the early bed where I have my early glow and honey o varieties. And on this side is the later season bed and I have a jewel and AC Valley. These I have just now, like in the last two or three days, started to produce strawberries. In fact, yesterday was the first time we got to taste a strawberry off of the jewel okay so this is the early glow variety strawberry and you can see there's all quite a few runners that they, they have put off now this one has rooted if I tug on it it's it's in the ground this one's setting off another runner and we can we can so, sort of direct them into an empty spot the idea here is to fill in the middle row and the outside with runners. Um, so we'll have plenty, we'll have more strawberries next year. Uh, we have quite a few that are ready to pick. Some of them are very small. The early glows are smaller and sweeter. That one's ready to go now. 
So the early glows are small strawberries, very, very sweet. Um, and they are early, early. That one's not quite ready. See the difference. Um, so that might be ready this afternoon. They're, they come ready quick. We pick them in the morning and in the afternoon. So you can see quite a few runners. There's one. There's quite a few as they cross. There's plenty of runners in here. Even though we did not pick the blossoms, we're getting plenty of runners in the early glows. Now, the honeyos are not shooting off as many runners, so it may depend on the variety. Now the jewel variety is a later version, a later variety, but the strawberries are so much bigger. So you can see that one is an early glow, the small one, and the jewel is more than twice its size. So while um, they are later seasoned strawberries, they're going to be much, much larger. And they are very sweet. <laughs> I'm going to set these strawberries down and uh, show you uh, my watermelon beds. So uh, we've got several watermelon plants started, but for some reason the Charles Dowding style beds here, don't. I guess they don't have enough dirt. The same dirt is in the strawberry beds behind me, but we don't, we don't, it's not as thick in the Charles Dowding style beds on this side. So this one is our watermelon bed, and originally this one was supposed to be for corn, but our corn did not come up. So we planted watermelons in there instead because we had plenty of starts. So sometimes you have to kind of use what you have. What starts do you have and fill in. Okay, well that's it for the this little garden update. Thanks so much for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks.